What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be integrating NeoVim into VS Code. So in previous videos, if you've been following the channel or you've seen my uh, NeoVim playlist, then you know I've spent some time uh, setting NeoVim up to be more like VS Code. Um, in this video, we're gonna be going in the other direction and we're gonna be making VS Code behave more like my NeoVim config. Um, so first I'm gonna show you all of the things uh, that you can now do in VS Code with this configuration. Um, to get it to behave more like this. And then in the second part of the video, I'll show you all the extensions and configuration and stuff like that that I had to do to set it up this way. All right, so the first thing we'll talk about is just the completion. And let me um, enable this so you can see all the buttons that I'm pressing. So we'll talk about completion first. Um, in my NeoVim config, you can press Control J, Control K to move between all of the um, completion options or shift and uh, or tab and shift tab to move between them as well. Um, so I just wanted that exact same thing to happen over here. So if I go to import, I can press shift, I can press or I can press tab, shift tab to go backwards, tab to go forwards, and I can press control J to go up and control K to go down or control J to go down and control K to go up. Um, so that's just completions and like how to navigate the completion menu. Um, the other thing that I'll show is the splits and moving between splits or windows or whatever. So I'll press space um, and this is which key. I'll show you that we have exactly the same kind of idea. Um, there's a which key extension for VS Code as well that'll work just like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press V here for a split to the right. All right. And now I can press control H to go to the left and control L to go to the right, which is just very Vim like to move between splits and windows. So we'll jump over here and I'll press space. And this is going to be your which key menu now um, up here. And if you look at V, we'll just press V. And now you can press control H to go left and control or yeah, control H to go left and control L to go right. And that's just again, very Vim like. Um, so another thing you can do is uh, you can press colon and it'll open up the Vim command line or command mode, right? And you can press Q and then enter and then it'll close that. So all of the same uh, NeoVim commands or Vim commands uh, will be available. So things like that. Now what we'll also do is we'll look at the Explorer. So if you want to choose different files and I just press space E for my Explorer. If you want to choose different files um, in this, all you have to do is press space E, J and K to move up and down in this menu here, and you can press L or enter to choose a file. Um, so if I press L here, all right, I opened up a different file. I can jump back over and I can move between the two with, uh, again, control L to go right and control H to go left. Um, if I want to rename one, I can press R on top of it, um, and it'll ask me to rename it. Um, I can press A to create a new file in here. We'll wait for this to go away so you can see that. And then I can press capital A uh, to create a new directory in here. And you can see that there. So let's see if we can get that same exact behavior in VS Code. So we'll make this big. Press space. Uh, you'll see E is toggle the explorer. I'll press E. Um, it won't automatically put me over there, but again, you can just press control H to go to the left. And now we have J and K, which move us around in here. Um, you can press L to open up a different file or enter if you want to. Um, now, if you want to rename something, you can press R and you'll start renaming it. Uh, you can press A to create a new file and you can press capital A for a new directory. All right, so let's uh, close this now. All right. So another thing is if I want to move between buffers, just kind of cycle between them, I press uh, just tab. So tab just moves me between them. Um, so if you want to move between buffers or tabs or however, you know, it's a little bit different, but you can just press tab to move between these as well. So that's just one other small detail that uh, I have in my NeoVim config that's now in this. Uh, let's see, what else? Also, there's the hover menu. I guess I didn't go over that yet. Uh, typically, if you want to like hover over something, you have to like move your mouse over top of it like this, right? So instead of doing that, what I have over in my NeoVim config is just Shift K, um, and it'll just hover over the thing. It'll like emulate a hover, right? 
So that same thing is now available over here. I can do Shift K, Shift K, Shift K. And I just think that's faster than, um, you know, pulling, taking my hand off the keyboard and doing like this. It's just more keyboard driven. Um, let's see, another thing would be like kind of searching. Uh, so let's talk about searching. So over here I use sneak, so we'll do DI to like jump to it. So, all right, well, let me just show you what I did there. Um, what I actually did was I pressed S, right? And then I'll enter D, I. And then now if I press S or colon or F, um, it'll take me to that div. It already put me on the first one, but now if I press like, or semicolon, I'll jump to this one, right? So that same thing can happen over here with um, a built-in easy motion uh, plugin. So now it says down here, search for two characters after pressing S. So, so all right, so I just pressing escape, I'm regular here now, right? And I'll press S and then search for two characters. We'll search for div. You can see that it kind of only highlights uh, div. So we'll press, uh, how about G to go to this third div down here. All right, and now we're down there. So we have that. We can also do like a regular search. So you can see if I press um, forward slash, it opens up uh, a uh, like a forward search, right? Um, so let's do, I don't know, let's do a div. All right, and now you can press N to go to all of them. So it really is just them, right? And then uh, shift N to go backwards, capital N to go backwards. Now imagine you wanna get rid of that highlight, right? Um, this is something that I think annoys a lot of people in regular Vim too. Uh, you can press, you can go into command mode and you can do NOH, right? Or I have a uh, command here, which will do which will do that same thing. It's called highlight, it should be called no highlight. But if you press space N, it got rid of that. And I'll show you later how that's actually just sending the NOH command uh, over to NeoVim to get rid of that. So I think that's most of all the things, like that's all of the important stuff for me, which is just navigating and moving around uh, VS Code, kind of how I do in, uh, in NeoVim. Another thing would be like, and you can explore a few of these other things, like if you press space and G, uh, you'll have a bunch of git commands that you can kind of go through here. Um, like I probably, yeah, you could like check something out or whatever. It's very similar to over here where if I, if I press uh, space G, I have a bunch of git commands. Um, and if you press something like, uh, there's also like the mini map. Like I know p some people like the mini map. I don't find it super useful. I guess sometimes it can be useful, but if you press space M, that'll uh, toggle the mini map. Uh, also, if you do space capital T, or let's do uh, space TT, you open up a terminal and you can move between the uh, active editor and the terminal with just uh, control J and K, right? So it kind of helps you just, you know, stay on the keyboard and not have to like, okay, let me click into the terminal, let me click over here, because that's kind of painful, right? So we can go up here and get rid of it again. Um, another thing would be capital T and then T, which will give us that activity bar menu. A lot of people use it, I guess, for, you know, find and replace, um, opening up that explorer and then using Git. But you can see, you know, we can do all, we don't need that anymore, right? We don't need to go over here and click on all that stuff. Cause what we can do now is we can press um, space, we can press G and I just showed you the Git stuff, but we can press F for find and replace. Uh, we'll do it in the file. So I'll press F again and then we'll do import, right? And we'll say foo, okay? And now it just changes like all of those import statements at the top to foo. Uh, it's similar again to like how I would do that in NeoVim where I would press space, F, uh, B for buffer instead of file, I guess. And then I would put something like, we'll put import and we'll replace that with foo. And then, uh, and you can kind of barely see this down here, but then we'll have to put this, it's like a, uh, you know, way to do it. And then you'll come over here, you'll press S and that'll substitute everything there. It's a little more involved in uh, NeoVim, but it's the same idea. So it's at least the keyboard is driving like the same actions, right? Like pressing the same keys drives the same actions. Um, and let's also undo that. All right, so I think that's most of what I wanted to show. I don't think there's much else. There's definitely a few other things that I'm forgetting, um, but that's a lot of the important stuff that just make it easier to navigate VS Code because I, I don't know, after using Vim for so long, 
you can kind of understand like why it would be difficult to click around. So I'm gonna leave this menu open because now we're gonna go over some of the um, extensions that I'm using to make this happen. So over on my website, I have an article here about integrating all of this. And what I'm using instead of VS Code is I'm actually using this thing called VS Codeium. Uh, VS Codeium is like an open source version of VS Code. It's exactly VS Code. It's everything that Microsoft puts out under the MIT license. Um, but it's not, it's without all of the telemetry and tracking and you know bad licensing and all that kind of stuff. So VS Codeium is like a better, you know, more open source and free version of VS Code, right? And then I'm going to show you the NeoVim plugin that I'm using for that. So this is just installing VS Codeium. Uh, if you want to be able to get all of the plugins, you're going to have to open up the product.json and point to this instead of the other thing, um, the VSIX thing or whatever they have over there. Um, this will give you a bigger uh, selection for extensions, so I have some uh, explanation on how to do that here. I won't really go too far into it. Um, the NeoVim extension, so the NeoVim extension actually, if we'll search for that actually, we'll go over here and click it here, Neo. Vim, all right, and it's Neo and then space and then capital Vim. Um, I think he just didn't want to use like regular Neo Vim and that's why he called it this. It might be called Neo Code actually in the future from what I've been reading, but uh, yeah, it's a really good extension because it, it's not emulation, right? It's like real, it's really sending commands to Neo Vim and I'll show you um, in, in the config like how that's working, right? Um, so let's jump back over here. Um, and this is like, so I guess what I'll have to do is show you this. So let's do settings. And what you'll do is you'll go down to extensions and it'll be under NeoVim. And so what you're gonna wanna do is point to an executable. There's different ones for different OS's, right? So this is Darwin. If you don't know, Darwin is uh, OS X or Mac or whatever they're naming it. Uh, this one's Linux. So you gotta point it to your Linux binary. If you use Windows, same thing for that. Um, and then you also have to point it to your init.vim as well. And that should pretty much always be in, um, you know, uh, home.config and vim init.vim. So once you do that, what you'll have to do is set up, and I am using a lot of the regular, uh, um, like the, the stuff that he gives you, like an example kind of thing for it, and, or an example configuration, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's jump over here. And I guess I'll just come over here and do J and Vim and then open my init.vim. And then I have this thing that says if exists uh, global variable VS code. So every single time you open VS code, that variable will, be, variable will be set. And when I do that, I this is the only time that I source specific plugins. So here I'll go to um, a plugin here. So like if VS code exists, that's when I load easy motion or this special thing, the special easy motion that works for VS code. Um, and then I also load the uh, easy motion configuration here and special settings for VS Code, uh, the NeoVim plugin. So we'll jump into this file, which is just settings.vim in here. So like if you're in my, and this is all on GitHub too. So if you're interested in this config, you can just go over to my GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, you can click on NVim and then you can see that all of the stuff for this is in VS Code and settings.vim, so that's what this all is. All right, so let's jump back over here. Um, so we'll jump into the settings and you'll be able to see, like if I go down to the bottom here, like that control J, like moving between all the splits and stuff like that, that's actually, I'm doing that from my NeoVim config. I'm not doing that in like the settings in VS Code, I'm doing that here. So this says like in normal mode, control J means, and then you call this function called VS Code Notify, and then workbench.action.navigate down. Um, if you wanna see all the actions that you kind of like have available to you in VS Code, then what you'll have to do is come over here, click on settings, um, then there is keyboard shortcuts. And if you go into keyboard shortcuts, like these are all of the, I guess, commands that are available. Um, or different things that you can do, right? So if you wanna like have a key sent that's sent to NeoVim, like do one of those things, what you'll do is you'll go here, you'll find an action that you want to implement, and then you'll just do, okay, when this key is pressed, 
uh, call VS Code Notify and then just pass that action into one of these. And then just this this thing is a uh, carriage return. This just means press enter, right? Um, I'm doing that same thing for like commentaries working um, and which key, right? So that which key dot show thing, that's an action that's given from an extension um, in VS Code, right? So I'll show you, you would have to install this extension called which key, uh, which key. And so you'll, you'll click on this. It's from this thing called, I guess, VS Space Code or something like that. Probably doesn't have nearly as many downloads as I think it should have because it's pretty cool. Um, and then what you'll do is after, after you download this, you'll have access to um, a keyboard shortcut called, and we'll search for it here, which key dot show, right? So um, since, you know, all of your keys are sent to NeoVim first, um, what will happen is space is sent to NeoVim. Um, it calls VS Code Notify when space is sent to NeoVim in normal mode because it's NN or N no remap, right? So this is in normal mode. Space key is pressed and you'll call VS Code Notify and then which key dot show. And so all of that just kind of translates to uh, me being in, and we'll just find a file here to be in. Um, I don't know, let's see, let's go in here. And all that just translates to me pressing space here and then this thing showing up, right? Uh, just like when you press, uh, and we'll just open up uh, this guy here, just like when you press control H, it goes over there and control L, it goes over there. It's the same concept. So if we go over here, you'll see um, that's this stuff here, control J and control K and H and all that kind of good stuff, right? So this is the settings that you'll need here. Also up on my GitHub, you'll see uh, in my, uh, in, a, in a section here called utils and then VS Code Config, you'll see a key bindings.json that I have there uh, to get a lot of the same key bindings that I use and a settings.json. The settings.json is where other which key bindings are. Uh, some of them are sent to NeoVim and some of them call things automatically. Like this one's just calling a built-in command for VS Code. And uh, some of them are sent there. Like this key right here is sent to uh, VS Code. It'll be VS Code uh, NeoVim.send and then you'll pass the argument of the key that you want to send. So for instance, for the no highlight thing, uh, is that not in here? Well, it should be in here, yeah. Hold up, we'll just have to find it. I don't know why I didn't search for it and it didn't work, but uh, let's see. Should be in here, pass G, pass H. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 um, that's because I just, I haven't pushed that one up yet. So, yeah, I, you'll be able to see that. I'll, I'll push up a new one that'll have all of those commands in it as well. Um, links to all of the settings and stuff I have here. Um, I'll just leave in the in, in the blog here so you can just click on the settings.json, the keybindings.json, and the settings.vim. And I'll also leave some links to the repos. So this is going to be a link to VS Codium if you're, if you're interested in that. Uh, NeoVim, the NeoVim extension for VS Codium, and uh, VS Code WitchKey as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope this will you know, kind of inspire you to embed NeoVim into VS Code because that's kind of like the idea, that's one of the main ideas behind NeoVim was that you would be able to use it everywhere, right? And so like you can actually use it in VS Code, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.